So you've decided to take the next step to your Xfinity experience and decide to get Gigabit Pro. Gigabit Pro also has the name of Gigabit X3 and Gigabit X6, depending on the market that you do live and reside in that have service with Xfinity. Now I'm going to go over the steps of what you need to do to get this amazing, super fast speed. And being honest, with it being dedicated Ethernet, it is still cheaper than AT&T's 2 and 5 gigabit plans. You may ask, well, why is that? Because it's dedicated. It's not GPON technology. Not everyone has this av available to them. So it truly is a dedicated product and requires the time to get it installed and activated. So I'm going to jump into the steps with you and we're able to see if you are able to get Gigabit Pro like us. So stay tuned and we're going to hop right into it. Hey everyone, my name is Austin, also known as Mad Gigabit. A lot of you know me from doing the gaming and the streaming and whatnot, but a big audience of my YouTube channel is talking about Xfinity and the Gigabit Pro. Gigabit Pro is a service that will soon be 10 gigabit uh, here in the Northeast, and currently it's six gigs right now. They're testing and rolling out 10 gigs to certain customers in certain areas. Out West, it's either three or six gigs. Uh, in the Central and South, it's mostly all six gigs. So there's a couple different packages that they call it. They're changing names, but I am speaking directly on the Gigabit Pro. I am here in Pennsylvania, which is where I live, reside, and have Xfinity service. Now, the very first thing to rule out if you can get it or not get it is by looking online. When you go to the Xfinity website, you're able to log in and see what packages are available. Um, you will see where it says Gigabit Pro up to 6,000 megabits per second. Uh, and it will tell you to call 1-800-XFANITY to order. It is $299 per month plus a $20 modem. modem. Uh, it's more or less a giant Juniper switch fee monthly so it comes out to around 325 with tax 330 depending on your area so basically you have to have gigabit available to even qualify for gigabit pro if you cannot get the 1.2 gig package from xfinity then you're not going to be able to even get gigabit pro um they will cover don't quote me on this but they cover roughly around eight thousand dollars of the install cost and depending on your market and your division Let's say the install cost was 10000 but they only cover 8000 Certain markets will say, oh, just pay us the 2000 extra to run the fiber, and you're good to go. However, and I say however, there are certain mar markets, and I've heard of it happening here locally, where someone orders, and it's like $8,500. It's $500 over the $8,000 allocated budget. They're being told you got to pay for everything. If it does not meet that criteria of 8000 and under, you're going to have to pay the entire cost. Uh, it just depends on who you work with and who you speak to and what your area and policies are. So the very first thing you're going to need to do is look online. If it says it's available, it may be, and it's not guaranteed. So do not get your hopes up. I know people that they say it's available and it's far from being available. When you call in, you're going to speak to sales. The words that should come out of your mouth is, I am interested in Gigabit Pro. Or if you look online and it says Gigabit X6, Gigabit X3, um, they're going to try to sell you on the Gigabit plan. You tell them, no, I want your symmetrical fiber plan. It's $2.99 per month. I want to speak to the Gigabit Pro team. There is a team of four people, four people for the entire Comcast company that handles taking customers from residential Gigabit Pro to the like residential gigabit to gigabit pro. Let me clarify that. There's only four people and they're going to take your information down. They're going to do a quick tabletop survey online. They're going to look at a map and say, hey, it looks like it's possible. Or they'll say, sorry, it's not. You're going to request a survey. They're going to send out uh, an email internally to the survey team and engineers. It takes about one to two weeks, but they're going to call you back. So be sure to answer any phone call. Even if it looks like a telemarketer, answer that call. They're going to say, hey, we did a survey. It looks good to go. We want to schedule a site survey. Or they're going to say, sorry, unfortunately, it does not uh, fall with our guidelines, to which you can say, can I please know what the guidelines were not met? They say you're 200 feet past, you know, whatever the case is. They'll say you're over budget. 
um, you're not close enough, get that information because you can always appeal that. You can appeal and get a second decision, which sometimes works and sometimes doesn't. It's worth a shot though. So if they say, hey, you're good to go, we need a site survey, good. So within a couple weeks, they're gonna, you're gonna schedule a date, guy's gonna come out, he may take photos of inside your house and outside, he's gonna take a look, he's gonna see where they're going to drill the router box on the wall, because they have their termination box and they have their giant router, they're 19 inches, they're one use, like server rack stuff. They'll provide you like a basic angle bracket and then they sit, it sits down in, I had my own, so I just moved it up into my own, and they prefer that, um, as long as you know what you're doing. Mind you, these are symmetrical speeds, and the typical everyday person is not going to use them. So what you're going to do is they may do a second site survey, depending on how long it is. So there'll be one or two site surveys. They're going to go outside. They're going to check the lines. They're going to pull out a meter, and they're going to walk it and see exactly how far of a run this fiber is. Um, and then what they're going to do is they're going to send it out to a contractor. That contractor is then going to either get a budget or they're going to tell Comcast, this is what it's going to cost. Depends on your area market. Um, here, what happens is Comcast tells them, we need it under $6,000. What will you charge? And then they usually are pretty reasonable with it. So what's going to happen from then is they're going to call you. They're going to say, Okay, we are good to go. We need you to do a third party phone verification, basically agreeing to the two or three year contract, depending where you are, uh, and the $1,000 fee. There is a $500 setup fee and a $500 activation fee. These are one time uh, and it is required to be paid. There's no workaround, there's no specials, there's no discounts. This is the cream, cream delay. This is the cream of the crop, the best of the best. You can't get any better than symmetrical internet like this from a well-known provider. Now, the issue that comes up is people don't want to wait after this because they now have to build it out and then have a splicer come out. So let's say you agree to it. It could be one or two months before the contractor gets it in their workload and they run the fiber. They do all the termination. They run it. They drill through your wall. They do. They'll drill like a, probably like a hole like this probably about three quarter inch. And then they, they send fiber through and they roll it up. They zip tie it. They silicone the hole. That's it. It sits there for a month. Another month goes by. Splicers come. They splice it outside. Then they splice it inside the usable fiber strands. That could take two to three months. Could take two to three weeks. Depends on your contractor and how quick they work. Comcast does the contractors. They have verified contractors in all service areas. Then... What happens from this is they're going to call and set up an activation date. This is the date that Comcast officially comes, not a contractor. Comcast will come. They're going to throw in the Juniper ACX 2100. They're going to plug in their 80 kilometer, however far distant transceiver, and they're going to program it. They program the Juniper uh, through the file, through over the air provisioning. It provisions. Then they have to do an RFC 2544 test. I'm pretty sure it is 2544. This is a test that basically confirms that the speed is there, the light levels are good, and no issue. The Juniper will have two outputs. Each has its own static public IP address. Uh, no firewall, no nothing. This is like enterprise class. Number one is a one gig port. That is its own VLAN that they assign you. It has its own IP address to which they will attach the Netgear R8000 router. That is one gig down, one gig up. On the other one, it's going to be what your package states. If it's Gigabit X3, it's 3 gig symmetrical over fiber. If it is 6 gigs, it is going to be 6 gigs down, 6 gigs up. Comcast Gigabit Pro customers are 6 gigs currently symmetrical, but a lot of us are starting to see 10 gigs because next year in 2023, they're rolling out 10 gig nationwide, uh, or so they say, but they're testing it now. They're testing it Baltimore, Pennsylvania, New York. They're starting to test it. You need to make sure that you have a router capable of terminating that fiber into usable speed. Um, you could use a Ubiquity Dream Machine Pro or a Dream Machine Special Edition. You could use a Microtik. I use a Sophos running PFSense or OpenSense. You could use either one. Basically, you need SFP+. In addition to your computer, you're going to need an SFP Plus card because your Ethernet is only good for 1 gig, maybe 2.5 gig, but you need a router that can support that. 
So you're going to need some sort of fiber termination. I would suggest the Ubiquiti Dream Machine Pro. They're like four, a little less than 400 bucks. They could do 10 gigs, has protection, firewall, clean UI. It's amazing. Um, and then just make sure you know that you're doing everything the proper way because uh, you need a firewall. These are business class IP address blocks that they give you, and you could easily run into firewall issues where people are trying to attack and get in. So you need a firewall, and you need to make sure that that firewall is secure. Because if it's not, you could have people trying to do RDP connections, SSH, anything like that. There are some cons to this, which I'm going through now. Comcast will not be GP. They will not give you reverse DNS. They will not give you more static IPs. What you get is what you get. Um, I, they told me I could be GP and get more IPs. I got quoted it. I was about to pay. And then they go, oh, sorry. No, even though we quoted it, we can't do anything about it. There is, work, there is a workaround. You can get your own IP blocks through Aaron or IPXO. And you can actually go through a company. I'm using Data Wagon. Uh, you can get any VPS or dedicated server host at bgp.services that will do BGP. And basically you just set up a GRE tunnel from their server to yours and do like a one-to-one -one virtual NAT. And you're able to use as many IPs as you pay for and buy. But as of right now, currently you cannot get additional IPs to Comcast. Uh, and that's just because they don't want you making money off of this connection, even though it's more than capable. If you guys have any questions, comments, or suggestions, leave them down in the comment section down below. Also hit me up on the socials. I'm on Discord, so if you guys want to find out how to exactly order, or if you have any questions, I am more than capable. Thank you guys.